Yeah, I don't care. Personally, I don't care if we're playing in the Sandlot, the Box, or a Major League Stadium. Like, it's all about the play and, and all that. But for these guys, it's really cool. This is what they aspire to do. And there's a strong connection with the Astros, obviously for us because of location, uh, Alex Bregman. Um, I've had several players in the Astros organization, so it's, it's really cool to be here. And, you know, they didn't have to get them excited for a 50-minute workout today. They, How important good. is it to get out here, though, and get a feel for it? Well, I, th I just look at it, it's like, you know, uh, the game, it's like you're attacking. Like you want to have the, the, the gun in your hand. And any practice day, it's like you're at the, the range, the shooting range. And so just getting acclimated, getting your sights set and all of that. So really no different than any type of usually Thursday practice on the road. But when you consider like the emotions of getting to play at a place like this, I do think it matters to be able to get out here. Yeah, decide on who you're going to go. You know, I haven't heard on anybody's rotation, so I'm just not going to give it up. It has nothing to do with you guys. I mean, Ari's used to this. It's the same thing in Tucson eight years ago, so. You haven't heard anything. I don't know who's, I mean, like, would you Brian you Kelly, anything, huh? would Brian <laughs> Kelly, no, from the opponents, like, I don't know who our opponents are. Would Brian Kelly say, hey, we're playing a 3-4 defense today? And no, he wouldn't do There's that. There's enough tape so. out there. We got it. Yeah. Uh, just how important is it, I guess, then to kind of keep building on what you guys have done so far? And obviously, yeah, it's a quality club in Texas. Yeah, great team, playing well right now. They played a good schedule uh, with San Diego, Cal Poly, and St. John's. And offensively, um, leadoff guy is a really good player, uh, probably playing as good as anybody in the country right now. Uh, Porter Brown, not off to a great start, but we know he's a really quality player. Uh, LeBaron is uh, whom I'm assuming they're pitching. I have not heard that yet. Um, for me, he's a top five pitcher in the country. And, and we saw firsthand last year. I need to take some notes from David Pierce on how he got him back to school this year because I don't know how that happened. Um, so um, that's going to be a great challenge. And I think it's the timing of it is necessary. I think we've improved um, here in the last week. And that's what we're trying to do is win as many games as we can, but, you know, get better, figure out what our best team is. And, you know, with the other two opponents, I mean, they play a very confident, aggressive style of baseball, too. So I think this weekend has tremendous value for us. Why was it such a priority to get in this tournament with this group of teams and just be in Houston? Yeah, it's, it's because of Houston, I think. Um, obviously, playing in this venue, very attractive uh, for our players. Uh, largest LSU alum base in the country is in Houston, so our fans get in here, so it creates a home field advantage for us, which is great. And then, frankly, recruiting. You know, with you know, Case and Evans, Kate Aaron Beatty, you know, we believe we have the two best players in the metro area coming to LSU next year. And um, they were here two years ago when we were here, and I think that helped, you know, move them in the direction of LSU is the place that I'm going to go. So we hope that has the same type of impact as future recruits, because I don't know that there's many better amateur baseball areas in the country than Houston. Coach, how has Brady Neal improved as a hitter this season? Yeah, he's improved a lot. I think really the, the most important thing is he's healthy. Uh, we've managed his load very well. Uh, Jeremy McMillan, our strength coach, and Isaac Trujillo have done a really good job with him. We had to repattern some swing stuff, uh, which we were able to do and uh, how he does all his strength and conditioning and post-training is all geared towards a swing. So he's just been able to hold up. So with us, you know, managing his load and all of that, I think it's put him in a position where now we can actually use every day to get better. And he's still a young player. I mean, he should only be a freshman this year. So I think, you know, the experience he got valuable last year, even though it was only half a season, and uh, like a night like last night, you clearly see the talent. Like, I don't know that we've got a, a more important player. And think about what I just said with, you know, Paul Skeens, Tommy White, from us getting here, then making sure he was coming to LSU and got through the draft. And, you know, I'm excited about his future. You don't feel any need to try to get your pitching set up with SEC starting two weeks? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, but, you know, it's the, the 56 game playoff thing still that's still a ways out for me. But the same things you need to do then are the things that you need to do now. And I don't know that it's about setting it up because the order that they go in doesn't necessarily matter. Um, it's the execution. And so we'll pay attention to all that, you know, for bumping a guy up, pulling a guy back, pitch counts. I mean, obviously we're bringing some guys along in pitch counts. 
Uh, it just, it's not as clean as start from, hey, we're, this is what we're doing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But don't forget, I mean, last year, best college baseball team in the last 20 years, like, I mean, Ty Floyd came out of the pen the first two weekends and then started every Saturday after that. So I don't think we're in any territory like myself or the pitchers involved are unfamiliar with. So they kind of know how we roll and, you know, we're doing a lot of things behind the scenes to set them up for that. It doesn't necessarily mean that they'll pitch on a certain day. And the quality of what you have supports that a little bit more? Yes, I think so. Well, we're going we're gonna to find out, you know, in short order um, relative to that. But when you get a guy like Cade to go out last night and throw the way he did, um, you know, Javen throwing the way that he did on Sunday, uh, we're in a really good spot. Like, I mean, we're a really good spot for as many games as we played, you know, going into this weekend to pretty much do whatever we want. And uh, it's fun to play with a full deck. And other than the two guys that aren't back yet, I think we're at a full deck going into the weekend. Your freshman and sophomore, sorry, uh, your, last one. your freshman and sophomores are just really playing at such a high level. Uh, is it indicative of just where baseball is now at the high school level and kind of the way they come prepared? No, <laughs> um, and I think we're lucky because we're LSU and uh, we got some really good players. This this freshman class is not large in numbers. You know, very anti-SEC-ish, is, is not over-recruited. I think there's only eight scholarship players uh, that we brought in in the class of 23. But when it's Kate Anderson, Milam, Jake Brown, Ashton Larson can rake, Ryan Kucherak is gonna be a future stud. I mean, those last two that I just mentioned would be starting on 280 of 300 teams right now. So I just think we hit on Cameron Johnson. Like, I think we hit on most of them, or if not all of them. And then they got better. Like, the fall was a little bumpy, but, you know, when you're facing our pitching staff or our hitters, that's like going from, like I say, from high school baseball in New Mexico or Maryland to the moon. It was like coming to LSU. And they've adjusted now and uh, credit our older players for helping them along, our coaches for helping them along. And it's been fun to see their early season success. Is this a big week for the offense to sort of figure out who um, who might be your you know, top 9, 10, 11 guys at all? No, I, I, feel like, I, I feel like I know that. I feel like we just don't have more. I think we have more than 11. So if I came out and I said, yes, it is, then I would be undermining player 12 and 13 that we could literally plug in in a game like last night's game and take any one of those guys out, and I don't think the outcome would be any different. So just because everybody else does that, that's not how we necessarily have to do it. And I think that's a really good thing. And so I was very happy we did not play the 10-run rule last night because by the seventh inning, I mean, we we wholesaled seven dudes, and they got three innings on defense, and everybody got on a bat or two. So, um, I don't think so, but it just I look at it differently. And to and to your point, like you've never been, you've never been someone who necessarily is you know rushing to try to find um, your best night all the time. You know, guys are going in the lineup. Uh, like I hate Dravinsky just last year. Yeah, example, exactly. Right. So good thing, good thing on that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what does a guy like Fidel bring to your bullpen? Ah, uh, great question. He, he's awesome. Uh, very happy. Uh, got him from a long-term relationship in California with Coach Peters at Delta College and, and Brian Condro. And they called me last fall and said, hey, I know what you're doing right now, but we actually have a guy. And so I immediately sent Josh out there. He saw him and he's like, Coach, we need to get him. And you know, he was uh, on a recruiting visit at another school and actually committed to us while he was on a recruiting visit at our school. I thought that was pretty awesome. I was like, I like this guy already. And um, he wasn't really healthy in the fall, so we didn't get to see the full compliment of what Fidel is, but he's been great in the spring. And I think this, this spring's a slow heartbeat when he's on the mound. Like we put him in and only high leverage situations and it's strike, 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 strike. It's O2 to everybody, you know? And um, he brings strikes, competitiveness, and looks like a guy that knows what he's doing and knows that he belongs. And when you're coming to a place like ours, it's really important. What do you think about his work ethic? You know, Love son of a painter, immigrant parents. Yeah, phenomenal. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I gave his mom a big hug the first time I met her, and um, very thankful for them. And, you know, the uh, players are often a, a product of their environment, and the type of person he is or the way I think about Fidel tells you how awesome, you know, his environment was. When you think of Cade, uh, the kid from Combo, the catcher, big time, what do you expect from him when he gets to LSU? 
Well, it's a, it's a good opportunity uh, to come in and, and compete and play right away because, you know, Hayden and Alex are, are leaving. And I think he has the ability to compete and play right away. Um, but really, it's just, you know, we think the talent is really good on both sides of the ball. So it's just a matter of um, getting acclimated. You know, we'll do the right thing with them in the summertime. Um, it, and again, a guy that builds his entire life around baseball. And those are the guys I want to coach. Any concerns with the bullpen at all? Not yet. I mean, I think, um, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a program that has pitched 17 guys already in the season. Um, I'm actually having a lot of fun with it. I mean, like Nick Bronzini came in last, I mean, he struck out three of the four dudes he's faced. And good for him and good for us. Um, you know, DJ Primo, I feel like we can match up. I feel like there's guys that haven't maybe even pitched as good as they're going to yet. Um, you know, I mean, Gavin Guidry, I mean, pitched seven times in the postseason and he's only pitched three times so far. Um, so I'm excited about that stuff. So. With Primo, you, it seems like you're you really like throwing him against lefties specifically. So, what what about his I guess um, approach or delivery makes sense? Yeah, special? I think he I think he's been in the zone, and um, you know he can separate pitches in terms of velocity. He separates pitches, and he can pitch to both sides of the plate. And um, you know he's just throwing strikes, and he's he's pitched with a lot of confidence so far. And I'm really proud of him for that. It's like. It's a good example of what our program should be and was when Coach Bertman was rolling as a guy would wait their turn. And I mean, he redshirted last year. Like, he was on the team, but he redshirted, but now he's ready to go. And that's total credit to him and, and Coach Yeski. They hit it off well and have worked well together. Does this feel like a chance to make a statement tomorrow? Nah, it's going to be awesome. You know, it's like, I feel like if there was like a college game day for baseball, they would be here tomorrow. You know, so. It's just, I can't wait. You know, the, the season's not defined positively or negatively by the game tomorrow, but it's like, I don't take them for granted. You know, I don't, you know, you never know how many of these you have left to, to coach in. The players have a smaller window to actually play in these, so there's nothing about it. It's just awesome. Are you excited to play these guys in conference play next year? Yeah, we're actually going to Austin next year. Um, I know that for a fact, and Oklahoma. Um, so I think it's that's cool. I mean, I, I have a lot of history with them um, in non-conference play, so I think having it in conference play will be be pretty cool. I have a lot of respect for Coach Pierce. We've we've crossed paths a lot, and um, you know, it's two programs that a lot of people care a lot about. So, which we'll see tomorrow night. It'll make it awesome. Hey, Coach, the opportunity to almost feel like you're in a postseason type atmosphere. How much fun is it to, to kind of get a lot of fresh faces, the opportunity to play in a in a postseason environment? Yeah, I think it's amazing. I don't think this will be duplicated by um, anybody, you know, in, in the preseason in college baseball because of the passion of the, the schools and the fan bases. And the, I mean, we're college baseball. You know, these are two programs that are college baseball. I think they have more Omaha trips than anybody. We have the second most national titles. Everybody gets excited about it. The location is close for us, close to them. It's, it's perfect.